Hey everyone, welcome to episode 26 of Brands on Brands on Brands. This week we talk about what does it mean to build a brand that matters? What does that actually mean? What is a brand that matters? What do you have to do to get there? Let's talk about it. Welcome to Brands on Brands on Brands. I'm Brandon Berkmeyer, and I believe that building brands that matter to today's consumers is the only way for a business to thrive tomorrow. I hope you get value out of these episodes. If you haven't been to my website, brandonbrands.com, check it out, subscribe. That's the best way to get access to my content each week. And if you'd like to get a hold of me, shoot me an email at brandon at brandonbrands.com. I'd love to get to know you guys as listeners and set up a call. Now let's jump into today's episode. What does it mean to be a brand that matters? I've been pushing a lot the idea that if you want your business to matter, you have to build a brand that matters. And I'd like to clarify today what I mean by a brand that matters. What are the components of it that go into building that kind of business? And the first thing I want to start with is who. The latest fad out there is to lead with why, start with why. I say start with who, because for a business to matter, you have to matter to someone. And what do I mean by that? I mean the people that come to your business, the customers that shop at your store, the clients that sign up for your consultations, whatever it is that you sell, the people are the ones that are paying for your business and they're the ones that you have to start with. You have to find a way to matter with them. So when you figure out who they are, you can figure out how to best serve them. So what do I mean by building a brand that matters? Mostly all the components you're gonna hear today center around how do you serve your core customer? If you know who that person is, then you can start to figure out what it is that makes them tick. How do they derive value? What makes them feel like a customer that's been served well? What's great is when you start to think about who your customers are, you can go back to your original goal, your original mission and say, what did I intend to do? What impact did I want to make with my business when I started out? Or what do I want to make? Or what is the impact that I want to make now that I'm in business and that things are moving along? Getting back to those actions that you wanted to take, those goals that you had set for yourself and figuring out how you wanted to impact your who, your customers, your people, that will get you much further along, much faster in getting to this core principle of mattering, getting to the core principle of building brands that matter to consumers so that they will be your loyal advocates, your people, your tribe that bring your brand into the future. The five components I think that contribute to making a brand matter that I want to talk to you about today are the brand has to be personalized. It has to be unique. You have to tell your story. You have to be interactive and you have to provide value. Let's go through those. Brands that matter are personalized. What does that mean? Well, that means that you are building your business around one person at a time. It takes a little bit of intuition. It takes a lot of feedback. You have to have the mindset that you are going to talk to your customers, that you put customers first, and that a main goal of your company is to derive feedback. So you have to build goals around gathering feedback. How do you talk to your customers? What do you put into place to gather that input? So some of the core habits you can develop in building a more personalized brand include things like empathy. You have to be able to talk to your customers and then put yourself in their shoes, understand what they're feeling, think about the things that they're gonna like and dislike about your business so that you can continue to adjust and add value in that way. Putting yourself into the mindset of your audience is a key component of being personalized to their needs. If you don't understand them, you're not going to be able to serve them. It will start with a little bit of intuition in terms of guessing what you think that they like based on the habits that are happening and the signs that you're seeing in your business. But there will be that extra step of taking that feedback and doing something with it. You have to go beyond that intuition to take actual action to align with your audience and what their expectations are. That being said, mattering at an individual level, one person at a time, by its very nature is personal and it needs to be customized to each person. So you really do have to think one person at a time. How do I make John or Sally or Fred, how do I make them happy today? What's the one thing that they would really want that would take this from being an average experience to an extraordinary experience to keep them coming back, to keep them telling their friends, to make this one of the best experiences they had today? Number two on the list, brands that matter are unique. 
if you want to matter, you need to have something about you that's different than everybody else. What do you stand for? Why are you special? What did you, when you got into this business, what were you thinking was the thing that you did better than everyone else that set you apart that was a reason people would come to you instead of the competition? For example, if a customer is looking for something convenient, you matter to them if you're the most convenient brand. Or on a personal level, if your boss needs someone who gets the most out of a team, your unique experience and personality matter to them if it's a fit for that particular team and you have skills at managing people. If you want to help a friend or a stranger, you matter to them because you are you and you as an individual make a connection with them. You are unique in that you provide something that the other person's looking for, and if they can only choose one, they would choose you. It's easy to get caught up in the idea that there's not much that's different about our business than other businesses or about us as people versus other people, but that's rarely true. Even though you might have similar business models or similar backgrounds, there really is only one business, only one person, only one way of acting, and it's individual. We are unique by nature, so it's pretty easy to just be yourself and be the business that you want to be and be true to your values. But those actions that will make you stand out, that will make your uniqueness shine through, that make you resonate with people individually, those habits that bring those things out have to do with the idea that you are consistent, that you sit there and you do that same practice over and over. You don't go back and forth. The things that you're good at, you lean into, you continue to make better, you continue to hone that skill of being best at that thing. If you only do something once, then it doesn't really stick to you as a core attribute. But if you do something consistently, and that's the thing you lean on, and you do it in your way, suddenly you have a unique proposition. You have a unique position in your business, in your industry, in your life that people will look to and know that that's what you're all about. So be unique. Brands that matter are unique because people look at that uniqueness and understand what you're about. If they understand what you're about, they know if you're for them or not. Number three, brands that matter tell their story. If you want to matter to someone, they have to be able to get to know you. They have to be able to find you. They have to meet you. If no one knows about you, if no one knows about your business, and they've never heard about you, how can you matter to them? So yes, if you want to matter to them, you have to be findable. They have to be able to stumble across you when they're in that place where they're looking for what you sell. This may be obvious, but I'll tell you, not a lot of businesses do the full job in putting themselves out there in all the places where people are looking for them. So one of those critical habits in telling your story to be a brand that matters is that you have to look at that who, that who is your customer, that person that values the most, and figuring out what do they do? How do they go about finding businesses like yours? How do they find you? This can be really easy. I don't know how many times I've been out there talking to businesses, and one of the first questions I ask is, how did your customers find you? How did your current customers, your best customers, how did they find you? Do you know? If you know, you should be able to reverse engineer that and find out how to do it again. Figure out what were those core steps that they took to find you in the first place and be more relevant and more impactful in those areas. And don't just be found, tell your story. You have to be able to tell this consistent story. You figured out what makes you unique. You now have to tell that story in all these places that people are trying to find you. When people find you, when they hear your story, they start to understand you. They start to know why you should matter to them. And that's what's critical about becoming a brand that matters to someone is them having a reason for you to matter to them. So brands that matter tell their story. The next thing they do, number four, is brands that matter are interactive. They engage with their communities. They build a community, they have their story, they are unique, and then they interact with that community. If you want to matter to your audience, you have to interact with them. They need to have an experience with you that forms a deeper connection. If someone hears that you're amazing at something or that you are the best solution to a problem that they have or anything about you at all, if they hear anything about you at all, it's just talk until they experience it for themselves. They say, oh yeah, I heard a good recommendation. I might know someone who might not be comfortable giving that recommendation to other people if they've never tried it themselves. They don't want to be held accountable for that opinion until they've had the experience. It's your job to find ways to create those experiences. And yeah, it could be the actual shopping experience, the actual in-person interaction with you, 
But even before that, before they're actually a customer, what are you doing to engage with them in a way that creates an experience so they have an experience of what you are like in person or in business? Now, you may come well referred, but if they don't try it for themselves, they won't recommend you to someone else. You may hear someone is a great guy, but until you meet them and spend time with them, you won't actually know. And that's the funny thing about being unique is that not everything is for everybody. We all have our own personal taste. We all have our own personal likes and preferences. Sometimes we vibe with one person or one business and not another, but plenty of other people like them. And not every business is suited to every person because just like businesses are unique, the customers are unique as well. So maybe you're great for one person and not for someone else. That's okay. Just know that every interaction matters. Every experience matters. You have to create those experiences. The goal is to create as many amazing experiences as possible and to do it consistently. If you are out there every day creating that same experience and the people that are supposed to like your business that had that same experience, they are the majority. And when they tell someone else the experience they had and that person comes in, they get that same experience. And if it's what they were looking for, they're going to like it as well. So create as many unique experiences as possible that are unique to your business, but consistent to the customer. Be interactive, find a way to engage, and build a relationship that is founded on positive interaction and experiences. Be interactive. And number five on the list, brands that matter provide value. If you want to matter, people need to end up better off than they started after meeting you. You can't matter unless there's some value that you've provided along the way that matters. Value can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, so it needs to be something that is important to each individual person. If you have a great low price, but the customer has a high budget and wanted more bells and whistles or higher quality ingredients, they're not going to find value in your product. The trick here is to be a good listener. You have to be good at understanding what your audience wants and delivering on it. You have to be good at asking questions and getting feedback and turning those into positive experiences. If you can get your customers to open up about what matters to them, you can find ways to then provide them value simply by giving them what they want and what they ask for. It doesn't have to be complicated. If you want to matter, give people what they want. You have to get out there. You have to listen. That's how you provide value. You're not in the business of selling things. You're not in the business of winning people's hearts. You're in the, in the business of solving problems and providing value. Now, this is an important one to me because I think there's a lot of advertising professionals and there's marketing services and agencies out there where they focus on the idea of the best way you can optimize your program to convince someone to work with your business or to buy your products. And a lot of it, it's about telling the right story and not in a way that's you know the, the real story. It's in a way of like, what's the best story that gets them from from considering to selling as fast as possible? How do you create urgency? How do you create connection? And you know, how do you manufacture this, this type of relationship with the person? And that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say, tell your story because it's your story and create a real experience with someone. And that's how you provide value if you want to matter. Not what's the best way to sell them, not some, what's the best way to get someone to change their mind about a business if that's not how you truly authentically are. And you can spend your money. Uh, there's lots of things you can buy that'll help you with the, you know, the best way to convert someone from step one to step two to step three, taking them through this funnel and convincing them that they have to buy it now, otherwise they're going to lose out on the, the value that they could have had. And I'm not in the business of tricking people. I don't think that's the way you build a brand over time. I think that's the way you sell something in the short term. And when that customer realizes that they didn't get the value out of that. Either they're going to talk about it and tell people not to buy it, or they're not going to come back and that's just as bad. What you want is a loyal customer. The way to build a loyal customer is to help them understand what you're really about and to see the value that you bring every day. And when you're consistent with that value, you are unique, you tell your story, and you show up to really be there for your customers and you know who they are and what they want and have answered those problems you're going to be successful. You're going to be a brand that matters to that person, one person at a time. And soon enough, that one person at a time will become two people, three people, four people. And you'll have a little tribe of customers around your business that support you, that speak your truth out to all their friends and recommend you and can't recommend you enough. That's the kind of business you want to build. You want to thrive tomorrow. You have to build a tribe of people around your business, a community that knows who you are, that you serve, 
that tells your story to the masses and keeps telling your story. And if you have that mindset that you're there to, to continually find ways to provide value to these customers, that's a brand that's going to last over time. And that's why I say building brands that matter to today's consumers is the only way for a business to thrive tomorrow. What I mean is take it step by step, building a brand that matters to today's consumers. That means you have to reverse engineer that person. What are they doing right now? How do they like to communicate? How do they like to be visited? How do they like to find businesses like yours? You have to understand today's consumers, not yesterday's. And you have to do it right now. You have to take action so that you're not slowly becoming irrelevant. And then that brand has to matter. It has to find a way to connect, to be unique and provide value. And if you can do those things, you will be a brand that matters. You will thrive in the future and you will keep customers coming back. And that's what matters. That's the difference between businesses at last and businesses that go under. There's a lot of people that had great brand names, but weren't good brands. Businesses that lost track of that customer experience and didn't evolve with the time. They found a good business model for a time, but that business model eroded. And as customers changed and what they valued changed, that relationship moved on to a different business that cared about what that brand experience was for today's consumer. That's really all I got for you today. Wanted to get you through what I mean by building brands that matter. It's something I talk about a lot. So I hope that added a little bit of clarity. I hope it spoke to you. I hope your business can get back to you know, working one customer at a time to really figure out how do you make those customers happy? How do you build that tribe that follows you so that you have those brand advocates that keep you in business when times are good and when times are bad? So get out there, listen to your customers, keep listening to the podcast. Let me know what you think. I appreciate your time. I'd love to get to know you guys better. Shoot me some comments, leave a review. Keep on listening. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.